Michael Frankel for CageMinds.com here at Fit NHB with the Wild Bunch interviewing Sergio Gutierrez. How's it going, man? How you doing? Good, good feeling good. Just got finished training. October 5th, King of the Cage, Future Legends 18, here at home, Crown Plaza, getting ready. And from yeah. what you've been telling me, you've had a huge amount of time for your considerations to prepare. That's Three true. amateur fights. Tell us about the preparation time that you had for those. Well, the first one I took was against a dude named Bryce, something from uh, Cortez, Colorado. And I had about three days to get ready for that one. And then uh, I fought his buddy, Grant Hobbs. And uh, yeah, I wasn't even really training at the time. But uh, I always, when I first seen Grant, I was like, yeah, you know what I mean? That guy would be a good scrap, you know what I mean? Because we're both the same size, skinny, you know what I mean, little dudes. And, and we did, we, we went out there and we banged for three, for about uh, two rounds. He tapped me out in the end, but you know what I mean? I'm not mad. But, uh, what's most important about it to me is putting on a good show. Definitely. And so, leading before this fight, what was the most amount of time you had to prepare for a fight? Uh, I'd say about a uh, couple of months. I'd have to say a couple of months because I fought this other kid named, um, I forget his name. But anyway, it happens. I had, I had uh, too much to train for him, and I was kind of hurt on that one, though, because uh, he took me down or whatever, got a few good quick punches in, and they called the fight right away. Sometimes the refs get a little scared and they jump in there too quick. And now this time, you got Joseph Hartwell, Hartmel. We're not quite sure on so, it. I know his first name is Joseph. And uh, it'll be at 125 pounds. Uh, I mean, 120 pounds, actually. My so we've got a catchway going on here. Yeah, it's 120 pounds. So we'll be, we'll be getting... A good show going is this on your there. first time dropping that low, or is that normal for you? Usually, I walk around like the highest I've ever walked around is 130 pounds. No, that's like that's on a fat day, I guess they would say. Lucky. Yeah, but like <laughs> most of the times, I walk around 128, 127. You know what I mean? So I have to lose a few pounds. I never cut weight ever before. I usually just fought at the weight I was at. You know what I mean? Like I either fought heavier guys or just the weight I was at. So for those of us locally, we've seen you box, kickbox, the MMA. You got to throw one of the three. Which one do you like the most? Uh, boxing. <laughs> no. <laughs> the only reason why I say boxing is because in boxing, you don't have to worry about takedowns or elbows or getting kicked. or It's it's hard work, boxing. But you know I, mean? I like boxing because you can go out there and you can just let them fly, let your hands go, and whoever's the best wins. You know I mean? But then, MMA, MMA takes a little bit more time and preparation to get ready for. I've been working real hard on my wrestling with Coach John Judy, so hopefully I'll be ready. So you're putting it out there. Ideally, you'd like to keep this fight standing, but you're prepared if it goes yeah, to the I ground? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not too much of a, of a ground guy, you know what I mean? I got, I'm somewhat knowledgeable. I, I can keep myself out of trouble when it comes to the floor, but people don't want to see that. People want to see you. People want to see you go out there and they want to see fireworks on they want to see people knock each other's heads off and that's what I want to give them. And whether it's me getting my butt kicked or it's me kicking the other guy's butt, the most important thing to me is putting on a, a good show. Exciting. And then a couple times you said you've been out to Grants, you've traveled for a couple fights. What do you think about the difference between traveling and being here in Albuquerque actually? Uh, you know, <clears throat> the only fights I've had here are like at my gym for the smokers. So. It's like a lot more nerve wracking than being out of town. Out of town, nobody knows who I am, you know what I mean? If I lose, and oh wow, well, you know what I mean? I'm, I'll be gone the next day and no one will even remember me. <laughs> but here at home, it's a lot more nerve wracking because I see these people every day. <laughs> and I'm gonna be catching shit with my teammates for, for the dumb moves. But, yeah. So, how do you look towards how to look? The family's gonna be there, the crowd's gonna be cheering yeah. for you. How do you calm those nerves? What's that gonna be like for you? I, I have no idea, but I think about it sometimes in my head and I get like these little panic attacks and then I just try to remember who I train with and where I train at and it usually helps me to calm down, you know what I mean? I take a look at my training partners, you know what I mean? And I'm just training with them. I take beatings from them. I'm taking readings from pretty much anybody. <laughs> so you think there's going to be something different in the air that <laughs> night when they're like, you know, it's your turn. You're up next. Get oh, ready. I guarantee you, there's gonna be something different. It's been a while since I've since I've uh, had an MMA fight. Like I said, it's been about a year and a half, and it's been uh, a good 
I say a good four months since I fought at all. And you know, I mean, I'm pretty, pretty amped up. I want to get in there and I want to get a win. You know, what I mean, I don't know what it feels like to win in the cage, and I just want to get that win. Four months. We saw you the last boxing smoker. Kind of got a little crazy, a little oh, out of control. Yeah. So, what are you looking forward to about seeing the conclusion of a fight this time? Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. You know, I mean? we've been. I just like the most. Like I said, the most important thing to me is. I want to make the people happy. You know what I mean, I want the people to be cheering. Yeah, you know I mean, because like I said whether it's me getting my butt kicked or it's me kicking his butt, I'm just out there to put on a good show no matter what. You know, I don't, people pay good money. The way I see it, people pay good money to come see these fights, and and no one wants to just see you lay on top of each other. You know what I mean, unless you're a sick submission artist like freaking my friend Ray Borg out there, you shouldn't have no business on the ground. You know what I mean. That wrestling and holding each other down and not really doing nothing is not, not my style. I'm not saying if I have to take it there, I won't. You know what I mean? If worst comes to worst and I have to take it to the ground, I am. But I'm, I'm hoping that it doesn't happen that way. And what is it about combat sports that make this, you know, your activity? What is it about fighting that, you know? You know, I do it mostly because I have uh, two boys that do it too. Sir, little Surge and Alejandro, they're pretty well known in here in, their, in our gym and, and at the grappling tournaments and stuff. And I do it mainly to encourage my kids to, to never give up. Like their motto says, fit kids never give up and whatever it takes. Like our motto says, you know what I mean? You gotta get down to the nitty gritty you wanna win. And I just wanna be an example for them. You know, I don't wanna be one of those cheerleading parents who's yelling from the sideline, you should've did this and you should've did that and they have no idea what it's like to even be in a fight, you know what I mean? So that's why I do it. I do it more because I'm kind of an adrenaline junkie, you know what I mean? And, and my kids do it. I want to set a good example for my kids. Talking about your kids, a little surge. Didn't he just come off of a yeah. win at the Judgment MMA Smoker? Tell us about that. Yeah, he went in there and he represented big time, man. You know what I mean? When they're that small, it's just awesome. <laughs> to give it their all and come out on top, you know what I mean? I, I, I try to teach my kids whether you win or lose. The most thing is that you be excited, you know what I mean? You, people want to see people go at it. They don't want to see this running around and, and just tip tap stuff. They want to see people bang and that's what I want to instill in my kids that they put on a good show. For being the martial artist, being the fighter, to incorporating that into being a coach and a father, how has that all helped you grow and mature as a person? Well, you know, I don't really coach, like, my kids, sometimes our fit kids get real big, so, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll step in and help them out, but, I mean, other than teaching my kids things, like I said, I'm barely learning myself, so I don't want to teach them no bad habits, and then come do it here, and, yeah, I just want to let their coaches and our coaches teach us and do what they're, what they're good at, you know what I mean, and, and we'll just listen. <laughs> <laughs> gotta thank you for the time. I know you got people to thank, so give you oh, yeah. to do all that. I want to thank all my teammates, the Wild Bunch, for sure. I can name name my name, but uh, I just got finished with the Shark Tank. And I'm kind of dizzy right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I want to for sure thank all my teammates and my coaches. You know what I mean? I want to thank my wife and my sons for standing 100 percent behind me. You know what I mean? The people at my work who support what I do, and, and I just just want to thank everybody who's giving me a chance to train with them. October 5th at the October Crown Plaza. 5th. Be there. I'm going to bang. We'll see you all there. King of the Cage, Future Legends 18.